In this video, I'll cover how to pass arguments to existing functions inside of functions you are creating. To do so, I'll use the website revenue data highlighted in the last section. I'd like to create a function that summarizes the revenue and other objects like it. I'll call the function revSummary, and it'll take just one argument that should be a data frame or a matrix, where the rows represent days, columns represent different websites, and the entries represent revenue for the websites on each day. I'll build in a simple check to make sure that the data object comes in in a form of a matrix or a data frame. If it doesn't, then I'll provide a suitable error. Next, I'll calculate two summaries, the average revenue per company and the average revenue per day for the companies. In a previous video, I used the apply function for this, but here I'll use two functions in R specifically built for taking the mean across rows and columns, row means and call means. I'll return those results in a list with two items that will be returned at the close of the function, mean revenue per company and mean revenue per day. Finally, I'll apply my new function to the revenue data. When I execute the function, I get a list back, as expected. However, there are some NA values that indicate that some data are missing. Here, I'll identify which observations in the revenue data are missing using the isNA function together with the which function and an additional argument, array index equals true. The first is for the 12th day and the third company. The second is for the 13th day and the third company. It's possible that some end users of this function, including myself, may occasionally want to have such observations omitted from the calculations in the functions using an NA argument similar to how we've seen this argument used with other functions. However, this NA remove argument would need to be passed to both row means and call means. This is fine, but it's actually a little bit more generalizable to accept an arbitrary number of arguments to be passed to these functions. I can do this using an ellipsis in RevSummary's declaration. This allows the RevSummary function to accept extra arguments not specified in the function declaration. Next. I indicate which functions should receive these extra arguments. Since my intention here is to allow users to pass the NA remove argument to row means and call means, I will add an ellipsis to the end of each of these functions. Now, if I pass NA remove equals true into the rev summary function, this argument will be passed to the row means and call means functions, which will then remove the NA values from the calculations. Note that if you want, you may access the arguments from the ellipsis in your function using the list function with an ellipsis as its argument. In this way, you may also write functions that allow for an arbitrary number of arguments and then access all of those arguments in a list. What's been covered in this video is how to easily pass additional arguments inside your functions and how to access those extra arguments using the list function. In the next video, I'll show how to hide function output that might flood a user's screen, and I'll also cover a useful tool for building recursive functions, which are functions that call themselves.